Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Creative Cooking in Arnie's Kitchen. Um, I'm at it again today, and today I'm going to bring you a chicken and pasta. Okay, and it's going to be a little cross between a little bit of Puerto Rican style, a little bit of Italian style, and probably a little bit of American style. <laughs> so, in there I have my bread proving. That's been proving since this morning. It's going to be an artisan, uh, no-need bread. Uh, so, it's been proving since about 7 this morning. Um... This chicken pasta, I'm going to use cutlets, although boneless chicken thighs, boneless skinless chicken thighs are better. I find that meat is moist and uh, it doesn't dry out. But because we're going to shred this, I went ahead and used um, a one large chicken breast, which is plenty for this dish, um, considering all the additives. I am going to put mushrooms in mine, so I'm going to cut these up and fry them in the bottom of the pan. I just may leave them like that because they fall apart anyway and shrink. I've got some, uh, I got some, uh, these are matchstick carrots and I just chopped them up into little tiny squares. Some celery, uh, onion, white onion, and this is garlic over here. And that's about five cloves that I've pressed. Okay, you're gonna need some olive oil I've got passata, homemade, that I made myself, okay? Um, I've got some cilantro. Uh, this is probably, I'll probably just top that, you know, at the end with some of the cilantro leaves. Uh, and I got a jar of tomato, basil, garlic, pasta sauce, all right? Just in case, if not, I'll just use a can of regular tomato sauce. I need to know how much it's gonna yield. Uh, to cover the chicken and the pasta. I've got, of course, my sofrito. And I've got some stock. But I'm going to use some beef stock instead of chicken. I wanted something fresh from the bone, something healthier. So that's from the beef bone, so I'm going to use that. Now for the pasta, penne is ideal. But all I have is rigatoni. And rigatoni kind of has the ridges which allows the, the meats to stick. It'll hold the meat better when you go to eat it. And uh, so I'm gonna use that, okay? So we're gonna get started here. And this is, I'm using this uh, Dutch oven to make this with, okay? I'm also gonna do a sausage French, French toast casserole, which is what all this is. And there's my bread already all cut up. And there's the casserole dish I'm going to use for it. I've got a lot of things going on. I'm going to make some broccoli to go with this dish as a side vegetable. And, of course, the bread's in the oven proving. And I'll bake that once I'm ready to bake it, you know, about an hour before dinner time. So everything is set. We just have to make this dish. So first thing we're going to do is season that meat. Season it whatever way you really want. But I'm going to make, I'm going to season it with some sasson because I want the color. So I'm going to get me two packs of sasson. Okay. See, sí, sazón con culantro y achote. So, that's what I'm going to do. Put a little bit. Usually, what you can do to chicken breast, um, put a little bit of baking soda, rub it all in there, and let it sit for like 15 minutes, then rinse it out and then season it, and it'll be so tender it'll fall apart. But I'm okay, cause this is just one large chicken breast and it'll be tender anyway. Because I'm gonna cook it for a while. Okay, so we have our bubble. We're putting in our sasson. I'm gonna add a little bit of oil for fat, for moisture. 
Okay. That's basically a little pepper, and that's basically all I want to cook with. You could put some cayenne if you want some heat. You could chop up some jalapenos, whatever, some chilies. Yeah, you can do that. Okay, so we're going to go in here and mix this and give this chicken some color and some flavor. You don't need salt with this type of seasoning. It already has, but you know, all the spices and everything, believe me, salt enough. Unless you really like a lot of salt. I mean, you know, do your thing. All right, so we have our chicken seasoned. So now what we're going to do, heat up our pan, our Dutch oven, and we're going to go ahead and saute our vegetables, our other sofrito, or our sofrito, I should say. Just about a tablespoon of olive oil It's good. Let that get hot. We're going to do a tablespoon of sofrito, nice heaping. I'll just put it right in there. Okay. That's in the refrigerator. Now, if you want to know how to make sofrito, I do have a video on that. So go check it out. And make yourself some. Or... Go to my Facebook page, Creative Cooking in Ani's Kitchen, and message me and let me know if you want to purchase any. I do sell them. And let me show you a, a sample of how they were, they are packaged. Okay. This is... Uh, 12 ounces. I sell it for 10 bucks. Vacuum packed. Nice and full. Okay. And this one I made special. Made to order. She doesn't, uh, she can't tolerate alum, onions. So, I made her special. And then I also sell them in these cute little, they're pretty big ice cubes. Trays with lid. Okay. Seven fifty. Okay, so that's what I said. Let me know. Just go to my Facebook page or oh, look at my video and go ahead and make your own. Yeah, get creative, make your own. I used to make a huge batch, package what I'm gonna sell, and then jar what I'm gonna use. Okay, so. We are ready to, let me bring you in closer. Get you right in the pot, okay? So, here we go. I wanna keep this on the number six, okay? To just release all its goodness and marry into one another. Okay, no hanky panky. <laughs> but we're gonna let that go ahead and do its thing. And I'll bring you right back as soon as we're ready to add the rest. 
Okay, it looks like our couples here have sweated what they need to sweat out. We're going to add the mushrooms to rinse them out real well. And we're going to add some cherry tomatoes. Let that stir fry really well in there for a second. Okay. Before we add our chicken. Oh my goodness, this smells so good in here already. I'll tell you, that sofrito, hmm, it'll have your neighbors uh, looking at your house <laughs> or your apartment. Mm-hmm. Yep. It is that delicious. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and let that fry up a little bit and I'll bring you back. Okay, y'all, so now we're gonna push all this to the side. And we're going to put in our chicken and kind of sear it. Chicken gets seared. Turn those tomatoes down, they get roasted. Okay, put up the edge of the burner. And I got it on high. Yep, yeah, it's searing nicely. Turning it over. See it searing? Nice. Oh, yeah. I tell you, uh, you all know I don't like kale chicken. on the other side. We're going to add about two cups of water. Okay. Put it back full force on the on the heat on the burner. Okay, mix all that in. And we're going to cover and we're going to let simmer on a number six medium for about an hour okay so I'll be back okay so it's been an hour see how soft this chicken is and look and the mushrooms you see what I mean they just shrink to nothing yeah so there's the chicken falling apart. That's what we want it. So it'll be easy to shred. And we'll shred it some more. Because we still have to cook this for another hour. We've got to make our ragu. You know? So what we're going to do is we're going to add our passata. 
And this is again homemade. All you do is just take some tomatoes. This is about six Roma tomatoes. And I stewed them in um, just very, very little water and um, some garlic cloves and basil. When I dry up the basil leaves and season it with what you want to, if you want to season it at all. And when you break up the tomatoes, you break it up with your hands. Don't put it through a blender. That way you'll get nice little tiny chunks. Because once you cook this passata down, it kind of dissipates anyway. You know, so there's no need for all that. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, is I'm going to add a can of tomato sauce. Okay. I was gonna add some spaghetti sauce, but I'm gonna add tomato sauce. Okay. One whole can. I love tomato sauce. So now we're going to let this put this back up to about five and we're going to see how the chicken is breaking up. Look at that. That's what we want. It's almost there. See that? That's what we want. So one large chicken breast is plenty. And then uh, it'll complement the, the pasta. And then what you're going to do, and vice versa. And then what you want to do is taste this for salt. I think it's good just the way it is, but I'm going to add a little bit. Well, that's not going to work. I use pink Himalayans fine sea salt okay that was about a teaspoon all right I'm gonna put in a little bit this is chicken oh no we got red sauce too maybe white wine Let's see. I think I'll put white wine. Okay, about a quarter cup. You could use red wine if you want. Or none at all. You can use masala. Okay. I always put about a tablespoon of sugar. You can put brown sugar if you prefer that. Uh, usually I use a, do an eighth, eighth of a cup, but this is not going to be such a big pot. Usually in chili, I'll do an eighth of a cup of brown sugar. If you don't like it, leave it out. But it'll tone down the acid levels. Easier to digest for me. Doesn't give me a stomach upset, you know, from the sauce and onions and peppers and all that that are in the sofrito. All right, so we're gonna go ahead. Let me give it a, a taste. Oh my God, delicious. Absolutely perfect. So we're gonna go ahead and let that simmer down before we add our beef broth. I'm gonna bring it up to about a six. And we got another hour. And it is 2.20, so plenty of time. Before dinner. This will be done. 
I got my sausage over here ready. And I'm getting ready to put that in my bread. That I broke up. It's a loaf of bread. See? I'm gonna ready to do that. So. That'll be another video. Now I do have a French toast casserole. I have different ones on both channels, but I think I have one on this channel. But as I told you, I have to redo a lot of them from the old channel, and I'm getting to it. I'm kind of, I'll do one from the old channel and then I'll do new ones, new recipes. Kind of satisfy everyone. Alright, so I'll be back after an hour for this dish. Okay, we got about 22 minutes to go. I went and put my pasta water on, put a tablespoon of rock salt in it. And, uh... What I'm going to do is add the beef broth to this right now and then leave it uncovered so it can simmer down to a nice thickness. And if we have to leave it a little longer, we'll leave it a little longer. All right, so let's go ahead and check on this. Oh, yeah. Look at this. Awesome. Look at this thickness and richness. See that? Now, we are going to put some Pecorino Romano cheese. Okay. If you don't have that, you can put Parmesan. But you have to take it off the heat first. You can't put it, otherwise you're going to get a gooey mess. Okay. Here's my, my beef sock. Beef bone, rather. So I'm going to put in about half of that. That was about a, two cups, 16 ounces. And then we're going to boil that down. And we're going to reduce that. Okay. And that fat's going to let the chicken not be so dry. And if it's beef broth, beef bone broth. How healthy is that? Look at that. See how the chicken has broken up? Let me show you. Look at that. See that? All that is going to stick to the penne. Well, the rigatoni. I'm using rigatoni. You can use penne. Now, from what I've understood and learned... Or learned and understood. <laughs> this is not an Italian dish. This is all American. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Italians don't have a chicken pasta dish like this. Mm -mm. Yep. Not Italian. Not an Italian dish. So, we're going to raise that to about a six and let that Reduce down. I'm going to put the screen on it to catch any splatter. And I got my water heating up for the pasta here. I have my rigatoni here. I'm only putting in probably half a box. Okay. And then after that, it's 3 o'clock. I'm going to move on. This is almost done. I'm going to roll out my bread. Let it proof for half an hour and 45 minutes and then put it in the oven. Then it'll be ready by 5 o'clock. How do you like that? If not 4.30. Yep. Pretty cool. I got my broccoli for the side. There's a salad in the refrigerator. Already made. That's the first thing I made. <laughs> I'll be back. Okay, here we go. I'm going to go ahead and put the pasta in the water over here. It's boiling. Yeah. It's a whole box. There isn't much left anyway. This is uh, exactly one pound. Okay. Get 
that salt distributed real nicely. And we got 11 minutes left on the clock. That's exactly how long the box says to cook that pasta for. Oh, Master, you're gonna excuse me. Here. Let's check. Got 11 minutes on both, guys. Isn't that perfect timing or what? That's how you do it. Break up some more of this chicken. This is just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Okay. If you want to use parsley uh, instead of cilantro, I'm using cilantro. Oh mine. If you use basil, chop it up. You can use spring onions. Okay. I'm cutting up my cilantro leaves. Okay, just sprinkle it over, and that should do it. That'll be it to cover it up, to decorate. This fragu is done. Okay, so the 11 minutes are up. Let's go ahead and test the, the pasta, the rigatoni. Huh? Can't do it with that. See if I can grab one like this. Need a fork. Mm -hmm. Perfect. All right, so we're going to turn this off. And we want that pasta water. That other bell you heard telling me that my oven is ready for my bread. I got a proofing over there. I already shaped it to a round loaf. All right. And here we go. You can drain the pasta, but you're going to need the pasta water anyway, right? So we're going to put in our pasta into a nice stewed ragu. And now we're going to stir. Let me get my my finger protectors. I don't know what I did with the other one. the water just a little bit not too much about uh, half a cup okay for now pecorino romano Look at this, lush. Ah, 
See, that's all you want. One chicken, large chicken breast is enough. I'm going to go ahead and put in a little bit more pasta water. And some more pecorino romano. So it doesn't dry out. And, uh, okay. Be generous with it. Yeah. Here we go. Look at that creamy sauce. Look at that. Oh, yes. That'll keep it moist as you serve it. Look at that. Mmm. See that? That's delicious. Well, I'm going to go ahead and put my bread in the oven. I have it already set for 500. I'm going to put it in the uh, Dutch oven, the cast iron Dutch oven I have over here, and uh, bake the bread. And I'll be back. You'll see a final plate presentation. Until the next time, you know, manja, manja. God bless you all. Take care of yourselves and one another. Bye.